In this video, we're going to talk about something called stop and frisk. Um, stop and frisk has gotten some negative publicity, um, especially how it's used in New York and uh, other places. It is legal in Louisiana, and in fact, stop and frisk is authorized by the United States Supreme Court. Now, stop and frisk has three components. It's the actual stop, a pat down, and the removal of an object, okay? That's the stop and frisk. The stopping part is called a Terry stop. That's named after the Supreme Court case, Terry versus Ohio, where they talk about it. See, up until then, the police need a probable cause to detain you because it's considered an arrest. Well, the Supreme Court crafted a lesser standard to investigate crimes, and it's called reasonable suspicion. And all it is is that the officer has to make a reasonable belief that you are either engaged in the actual commission of a crime at that moment, you're about to commit a crime in that moment, or you just committed a crime uh, moments ago. And it can't just be a hunch. They have to be able to articulate certain reasons why they are detaining you. And those um, have to pass scrutiny or it's an invalid stop and you can suppress any evidence that's recovered. So now they have the detention. What can they do? Well, they must then take steps through questioning to either confirm or dispel um, their belief that a crime is being committed or imminent. So um, where do we get the next step? Where do we get the pat down? Well, if the officer believes that you are armed, then they can do a cursory pat down over your outer clothing for weapons. And again, there's a reasonable suspicion standard. They have to say why they believed you are armed, okay? If they're detaining the local priest, maybe he's not armed, maybe he is, but they have to be able to say why. Now, during that pat down, they may feel something. They can't just go and remove objects out of your pocket. When they feel it, it has to be immediately apparent to them that's either a weapon or it's contraband. A gun, that's probably obvious to feel. A knife, probably obvious to feel. The problem is, is that when they feel drugs, how do you know that's a bag of marijuana and not a bag of some cooking supplies that I have on me? How do you know that those are Xanax pills and not Tylenol, not Tic Tacs? How do you know? Um, so the doctrine is immediately apparent. They, have, they must know it upon touch. And they cannot manipulate it in any way to figure it out. But assuming they had a reasonable basis to stop you, assuming they had a reasonable basis to do the pat down, and assuming it was obvious when they touched your clothing that you were possessing something illegal, they can stop, pat you down, and seize the object, and you can be prosecuted. That's stop and frisk. If you have any questions, uh, my name is Andre Belanger. You may email me at the link below or you may call me at the number listed here, 225-927-1234.